Greetings. Today, I will be teaching you all how to tie one off. Some good tea. So this first knot is dedicated to the Cali Mayor Middle School music program because during middle school I was that one kid who always wore a tie every day, still am, and when concerts came around as part of our uniforms we had to wear ties, so the uh, day before the band director would give a lesson on his podium, uh, I'd give a lesson off in the corner, and even at the weighing room before the concert people would be asking me to tie their ties, so I'm just going to show you right here. This one is called the Windsor Knot. It is pretty much your basic everyday business tie. All right, so first thing you want to do is pull your collar up. Then you're going to get the long end of your tie, and you're going to pull it over like this so that the seam is facing upward. Then, just going to fold it over. Then after that, I'm going to tuck it up through here. Pro tip, you want to fold the end to make it easier to go through the loop. Pull it through. Fasten it. Pull down your collar. And there you go. The second knot I'm going to teach you is called the cravat. It is the earliest form of tie worn by humans. The first neckties were worn as part of the military uniforms of Croatian mercenaries enlisted by the French during the Thirty Years' War. In 1630, King Louis XIII was honoring his troops, and when he saw among them the Croats with their bright red cravats, he thought, Whoa, those look pretty sick. And that year he made it mandatory for all of his court nobles to wear them, thus popularizing the style in France. However, the French did make a few changes to the original design. The Croatian cravats were bright red and made from a heavy, coarse wool material similar to what I have, which was apparently so strong that it was hard to cut with a sword. The French nobles instead opted to make theirs from a thin, delicate silk a decision which came back to haunt them during the French Revolution. Another interesting story comes from the 1660 exile of King Charles II of England to France. When he first saw the French in the streets with their fancy cravats, he reportedly exclaimed, Get me a tie, or I shall die. He later made his triumphant return to England wearing one, thus popularizing neckties in England and eventually the rest of the world. Alright, so to start, this knot, flip your collar up, hold it out like this. This one's weird, you fold it in the front, fold it over on either side, and you tighten it. You get your long end, make sure that's longer, you're going to fold it over. And you pull it through, tighten it. And then just neatly arrange that in front and tuck that into your vest. Fold your collar over a little and there you go. Alright, so this next knot is pretty simple. It's called the slip knot and this one's weird because it's one of the few tie knots you tie not actually onto yourself. You put it on later. So how you start is fold it like this, then Gonna fold it a third time down below. Then just gonna take the end and wrap it around a few times. Two or three is typically good. And then get the end piece, pull it through the loop, pull the top down to tighten it. Okay. Put it on. 
All right, and the cool thing about this knot. To untie it, all you gotta do is grab the end piece, grab the end, just pull it like that. So these next few knots are for people who really wanna go all out and just go as extreme with the tie knot as you want. So this one's called the Trinity Knot. It is real fancy one. Uh, it's good for going to church and stuff. So once again, I'm gonna fold up your collar. And for this one, a uh, tip is you want to have your end of your knot uh, on the long end as long as you want it because it is not going to move from that spot. So the first thing you do is fold it over and pull it up. And then pull it down again, under, and over. You pull it back again. You're gonna pull it down through the loop, like in the uh, Windsor knot. Gonna tighten that well. You're gonna fold it over again. And then you tuck this last bit into your collar. Fold it down. There is your Trinity knot. The fifth and final tie knot I'll be teaching you today is called the Eldridge knot. It is the most complex knot I'm willing to attempt, and it's good for any occasion you want to impress anybody, like a ward ceremony, a date, a job interview at McDonald's, you know. <laughs> so first, get your collar. And just like the Trinity Knot, you want your uh, end piece to be just as long as you want it, because it's not going to move. First you fold over. And we like this. Tighten that. Fold it around. And fold it over. So same start as the Trinity Knot. Except this is where you do a change. Fold that over. You go down, go up, down, you go over, and this one, coffee it through the loop, put your collar down. And there you have your Eldridge knot. In case you didn't understand the title, the phrase tying one on is an old expression that means to go to a bar and get drunk. Listen kids, drinking is not cool. Instead, get yourself some Count Xander's old time, old number 42, high quality Earl Grey tea. Some good tea.